Hi, everybody. It's Michelangelo Caruso. I'm on with a very special guest today. This is Dr. Daniel Gross. How are you, doctor? Hey, what's going on, guys? How are you? I always like to ask a doctor how he's doing. I don't know why. It just makes me feel better somehow. We're like regular people also. Yeah, I know you are. Well, you've been special to me, sir, because uh, you're an orthodontist who is uh, in the process of changing my life. Uh, we met about, I don't know, I think October, September of last year, and I came to you because uh, at mid, mid-age, mid middle-life age, my teeth were starting to move in different directions, and you said we could fix that, and you've done it, man. We are well into the program, and I wanted to talk about change, in particular incremental change, doctor, and, and because we live in a society with, uh, we, almost, we almost revere instant gratification. Do you bump up against this with your patients who want instant results, especially the kids? Sure, sure. Um, treatment, times, treatment time has become a very big um, a positioning point for different, for different, um, for different orthodontists where um, the quicker you can finish a case, uh, the more patients will readily accept treatment. Um, it's just the, the problem is just when you're dealing with the biology of a tooth in, in, which is situated in bone, there's just, so, you know, there's a, the, the rate limiting factor is speed. You just, sometimes you just can't, you know, there's no way to go beyond a certain speed most of the time. And I've got a, a, a product called Invisalign, uh, unlike metal, which you, you control the speed of the metal by turning wires and that sort of thing, tightening them. Uh, the so tray, you know, the, the trays are preordained, right? Oh uh, well, you can adjust it. You can tell them. You know, it's a, the, the beautiful. The beautiful thing about Invisalign is that it's completely in the provider's control. Uh, there are standards for how they for the speed that they set to move the tooth, but um, you can override the standards if you if you so choose. Um, well, most of the time we don't, but we can. Yeah, and in my case, uh, I think the directions say try to wear them twenty two hours a day. I knew that. If I only wore them 12 hours a day, I would be in braces a lot longer sure. than if I followed instructions. So I was trying to, I, I used to call it, I still call it getting my minutes in. I don't like to be without it for too long. I like it. Um, incremental change is also how you shaped your career. Uh, there's, a, there's a difference between dentists and orthodontists in terms of education. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Uh, both of us go to four years of undergrad uh, with a pre-med track. Then we go to four years of dental school. Uh, after that, you either have the option to practice as a general dentist, or you can go into specialty school. Uh, for orthodontics, it ranges between two and three years, depending on the state or the program that you go to. Um, and during those times, you strictly braces and strictly Invisalign, just moving teeth inside of bone, um, which really, which really um, specializes you in that. That's all. That's really it makes you comfortable to do that type of work. So just to review, uh, you can do everything a dentist can do, but a dentist can't do everything an orthodontist can do. Uh, sort of. We're trained the same way. Uh, there are certain uh, legalities that, that if you limit your practice to a specialist, you're only supposed to do specialty work. So as an orthodontist, um, uh, if that's what you call yourself, you're not supposed to be doing crown, bridge, and cavity fill. Um, and that's kind of how we situate ourselves. Well, I assume that's uh, what's good for the goose is good for the gander, but I've talked to a lot of dentists who now tell me that they do orthodonture. How does that work? Uh, it's very common in Michigan. I'm from New York originally. In New York, it's not so common. In Michigan, it's really, really common. Um, once again, if, as long as they don't limit their practice, they're allowed to do specialty work. Um, but if you limit your practice to specialty, you're not really allowed to do general work. Um, you know, and it's just a matter of, how comfortable they are with the procedures or what type of procedures they choose to, what type of cases or procedures they choose. I mean, there are difficult orthodontic, orthodontic cases and simple ones, and it's just really whatever they're comfortable to, to do. I mean, we have a lot of dentists who refer us cases who do orthodontics, and they just know where to draw the line, and they sure. send us cases that are a little beyond their, their capabilities. Sure. And so, then, uh, yeah. Go guess, ahead. Finish. Most of the time, they'll send their kids to a specialist. Yeah, yeah. I know I wanted to go to a specialist, and that's no dig against any of the dentists that, uh, that pitched me. Um, your office is in Huntington Woods here in southeastern Michigan. I'm in Royal Oak right now. Um, we're hoping that people can learn from our little session today and then make a better decision about how they handle their t management of their teeth. But we also uh, want people to understand that good things take time. Uh, I've been in a program with you since October for this regime. Mm -hmm. And I've been using these Invisalign trays that you provided through uh, 
some sort of measurement that we did initially. Can you tell us about that camera? I've never seen anything like it that went around my head like this. Uh, sure. So there are two, there are two um, uh, major, I guess, pieces of equipment that we used. Um, one is just the x-ray unit, which goes around your head, which just gives us a 3D understanding of where the tooth is situated in the bone so that we can have better control as far as we want to move it. Um, and then as far as the scan is, which is the fitting, most, most times in the, back in the days of yore, when you want to fit for Invisalign or fit for a retainer, you would take a gooey impression that has to sit in there for five, six minutes. Um, with the advent of intraoral scanning, it's really, you take a, it's basically a wand that, um, that takes a digital imprint, a uh, video, a video of the, of the, of the teeth. Is that mine? Is it? There, that's the machine. It happens to be in the room. Oh. It happens to be. Very good. Uh, I, like I said, I, I was really uh, uh, amazed at how this worked. And then the, the, the product of this machine, or a, I don't know, what a software that it generates, the, the mm -hmm. program, actually it's a slider, and you, you could show me how my teeth would straighten over time. You could stop the slider in any month. It was really remarkable. It, if you zipped it along, it, it was like a, a fast-paced movie of my teeth straightening. Right. So Invisalign fabricates a predicted movement of how your teeth are going to move. Um, and they do that based on the scan that we send them. It makes the whole thing digital. It's much more accurate and it's a much better system. Um, unfortunately or fortunately, uh, the, the, the people coming up with, those, with that video that you're speaking of, the Invisalign reps, um, typically, uh, you know, they, they hope, they, they try to do things that, that are beyond the limits of orthodontics because as long as it looks good in the video, people think it's going to work, but typically there are limitations. So typically I'll get one of those videos back and I'll be like, Oh, it looks great. And then, and then I'll be like, yeah, it looks great, but it's not biologically possible to, for that to occur. And then we'll have to tweak it. We'll go back and forth with the rep um, just to kind of get it to something that, that still looks great, but something that could be predictably done with wearing these trays 22 hours a day. Reminds me of other movies, the movies that say based on a true life story. It's not yeah, actually right. true. It's just, <laughs> it's not how it really happened. It's how it's, you know, how we wanted it to happen. And as a marketing perspective from them, you know, it's brilliant. Like it always looks great, but it's just a matter of can it occur, can it not occur. Right. So here's what the Invisalign trays look like, everybody. You see that I'm in month, uh, sorry, tray 25 of 26. And, you, and that's what the U is, the upper tray. The lower tray is tray 21. And the reason that hasn't changed in several weeks is because my lower teeth came into position sooner than the upper teeth. Sure. So I've been wearing a retainer, essentially, which I'm gonna have to wear after the regime. Correct, doctor? Uh, after treatment is finished, you talking yes. about? Yes. After treatment is finished, um, the teeth are always gonna wanna go back to where they came from. Um, whether you <laughs> had braces or whether you never had braces, uh, teeth tend to crowd up. Um, so something has to be done to kind of restrict that movement. And there are a couple options as far as what type of retainers to use. And we'll go through that when the time comes. Right. Um, one of the ways is a clear retainer, which is like Invisalign. The other one is a fixed one that you don't have to think about. But all that stuff, you know, it's just something has to be there. And that's irrespective of whether you have braces or not. Teeth crowd up as you age. So here's another you know, life lesson about change. We're talking about incremental change, slow change, good things coming with time, all of this stuff. What is the number one problem with people who spend tons of money, tons of time, tons of energy getting their teeth fixed? After their teeth are fixed, what is the number one problem? A maintainer. Yeah, maintainer. don't wear the retainer. Did you tell me that? Yeah, yeah. retainer. Like retainer. A, there's a statistic outside in your waiting room about how many people, I think I saw it there, how many people actually stop wearing their retainer. It's, a, it's like, it's high double digits, everybody. Yeah, it's, it's a scary number. Um, and that's kind of where the, the fixed retainer is coming more into play. The idea of, of, you know, gluing something to the inside of the teeth so that they can't move. Oh, that's um, the wire. Sometimes we see a wire on the inside yeah, of the teeth. The wire. Uh, yeah, and okay. it's becoming, I think, more popular as, uh, as people are becoming less disciplined to wear something every night yeah. for a long period of time. That's becoming uh, more standard. Um, a dentist don't like them because they're very hard to clean underneath. And if you're not on top of it, you'll get plaque and could get, you know, perio disease. But patients appreciate them because the teeth don't tend to move. Right. And, and you, you said a key statement just now. We're becoming less disciplined. I, I, that's not lost on me. That's, we're losing, I don't know. I guess that's why this topic is on my mind today, this idea of change and, and, uh, and, and, and staying with it, right? Sure. So um, 
if I open up this packet, this is again, we're getting toward the end. This is what the upper tray looks like. It's just, a, it's nothing, you probably have seen something similar um, because we all know people that, that wear these things. The thing is they would never take it out. <laughs> this is brand new, right? Nobody would ever take it out in a meal or before a meal and show you for various reasons. So that's what it looks like. And, and each tray had a, a little bit different calibration. And it would actually, I could feel it uh, the way that it grips my teeth because of the knobs. You call them buttons, I think, that you put in the teeth. They, they, they really do grip the teeth. They snap right in with precision, man. I'm amazed. And each set of trays takes me to a different place. You told me one time, doctor, how much my teeth are moving. I, I don't know if it was per week or per month. I always forget the number, but it's an incredible statistic. Give us the, the number. It's basically per tray, and it depends on the type of movement that the tray is moving the tooth. Uh, for example, a rotation, which is a kind of a circular movement, is different than moving a tooth in that direction or moving a tooth side to side. Um, but on average, it's about 0.1 to 0.2 millimeter per tray. So if you're looking at changing a tray once per week and you're talking about 0.2 millimeters per tray, we're talking about between 0.8 and 1 millimeter a month, which is the, the maximum you could probably get out of tooth movement without using something else. Um, if you try to overdo it, you get something that's called hyalinization, which is basically the tooth stops moving because you, you, the blood vessels that feed the tooth gets you compress them too hard too strong too fast and then you get slower movement so this is kind of that incremental change where you need to take your time because if you try to jump the gun not only will you not get there you'll get there even it'll take even longer to get there type of thing yeah so anybody listening starts to understand you really do need to work with somebody who knows what they're doing and there are many many i mean thousands of qualified orthodontists out there so tell me again the number it's 0.8 millimeters per month Per month. So it's about between 0.1 and 0.2 per tray, depending on the type of movement. You're wearing one tray a week, so we're talking about four trays a month. So four times 0.2, we're talking about between about 0.8 millimeters a month, which is a, which is a, which is a, it's small, but it adds up. And you told me one time, I don't know if it's going to apply to the 0.8 millimeters, but you told me you described it in terms of a human hair or width of a human hair. Each week tray probably moves about a hair, hair and a half. Each week, the tooth is moving about a hair width, everybody. I, I, I don't know if you can appreciate the, the precision that goes on with it. When I heard that initially, it made me smile, and I, I can't stop thinking about it. So where can people find out more about your services? I have a big following, of course, in southeastern Michigan, um, but uh, who knows? Uh, people watching this in Kansas may know people in Michigan. They want to refer somebody to you. How can they find you online? Uh, sure, we're at hworthodontics.com. Uh, the name of the office is Huntington Woods Orthodontics. Um, and this, that's kind of where we are. And get some more information from the website. Very good. So uh, just for your edification, Huntington Woods is just the northwest of Detroit by a few minutes. And uh, Dr. Gross has been fantastic for me. I think he's, uh, I, I know, he, I say he, in present tense, he's improving my life. But I started to get a little sensitive about my smile. I, you know, I do a lot of, um, I'm on camera a lot with speaking and stuff. And I found myself covering my mouth when I smiled because I didn't like how my teeth look. And I just know that when I get, when I get done with the trays, I get the buttons off, we're going to get polished up. You're going to do something with the actual, what do you call it? The profile of the teeth? Sure. Uh, what do you call that? Sculpting? Basically, within certain limits and within certain boundaries, we can adjust the shape of the tooth uh, in certain areas to kind of make it more, make it pop better. Yeah. Uh, we'll probably do that before we scan for the second set. Okay. Uh, just really to make, you know, because over time, teeth tend to chip or they, or they just, they're just, they're not, we'll call them a little bit off the ideal. Yeah. Um, so we'll kind of ideal it up. Yeah. Well, I can't wait to have my smile idealed up. Uh, you've done great things for my smile. I appreciate that. Sure. Can you do anything for my hair? I got to go to school for that. <laughs> Dr. Daniel Gross, uh, ladies and gentlemen, he's fantastic. I, I'm doing this uh, uh, because I admire his services so much, and, uh, and I hope you've learned something about the value of incremental change. Thank you, doctor. Perfect. Thank you so much. See you later.